Starbucks is down over 20% in just the last 12 months. This is a company that trades right there towards its 52 week lows. It has a buy rating from Wall Street and a forward yield of 2.86%. So is this a golden opportunity to add this undervalued dividend growth company to the portfolio? We're going to do a deep dive in today's episode. We're going to talk about the borderline dividend safety score as well, looking at the underlining metrics like the free cash flow growth, as well as the ROIC and other very important numbers. We're also going to talk about some insider selling that we have seen just over the last week, as well as talk about what the institutions are doing in the more recent quarters. Now, they have released their latest earnings, so we are going to take a look at the Q2 FY24 numbers, as well as some forward guidance going to be very important when we come to the valuation and as always we are going to look at their top line revenue growth year on year as well as their bottom line net income and also understand how healthy is this balance sheet their total cash versus their total debt again that will correlate to that dividend safety score and as always we will run them through the valuation model getting to our intrinsic value our acceptable buy price when incorporating our margin of safety and look towards wall street see what they're forecasting for Starbucks over the next 12 months. So first things first, let's take a look at the insider movement. So ownership does sit at just under 2% and we see around 2.11 million worth of sales over the last 12 months, no insider buying and we can see these are from three different individual insiders. Now over the last quarter, we in fact note 879,000 worth of sales and also some more sales in the previous quarter, Q1 of 2024. When we do take a look to see who these insiders are, well, in fact, the CEO, Michael Conway, on the 14th of June, so just last week, did sell 3,250 shares for an average price not too far off the current trading price at $80 and a total transaction of 260,000. Now we also know the CFO has also sold, but what we do like to reiterate on this channel, insider selling, we don't know why they sell, so it could be essentially for personal or financial reasons, but you can see the transparency, the information is here if you wanna include this into your own investment thesis. Now moving on towards the institutional ownership, we do see that around 72%. Now we note 7.6 billion worth of sales over the last 12 months, but more than three time worth of buys over the same time period. And in fact, we can see in the more recent quarter, Q1 of 24, 2.27 billion worth of buys, a lot more than the 932 million worth of sales. And we can see in the previous quarter as well, more institutional buying. So this part of the analysis, we do see insiders like the CEO sell in the more recent quarter, but we notice institutions have been buying a significant amount as well as over the last 12 months in totality. Always remember though, you need to do your own due diligence. You can't copy what these institutions or insiders do. Now, Starbucks, as we can see, down 21% over the last 12 months, also down year to date at 17%. But if you have been a longer term shareholder, you would be up 106%. We can see pretty much all time high sitting at $126 pretty much nearly three years ago today as well. As we said, right there towards the 52 week low, it is trading at a forward P around 22.3. Right there again, very similar to the S&P 500. We will, however, look at this in comparison to the sector as a whole and the forward yield 2.86%. Now, in terms of the numbers on the top line, as always with companies, you want to see 3 to 7% as a baseline. What we note, very strong numbers, 16.4 billion in 2014, more than doubled in their latest annual accounts of October 23 to 36 billion. And when we do look at it on a graphical basis, pretty much consistent increases year on year, other than that COVID year, which does make sense, the lockdown where people weren't able to go and buy their favorite drink. Other than that, it has looked very strong year on year. And we will look at that percentage increase very shortly as well. In terms of the bottom line net income, what story there? Well, 2.1 billion in 2014, and again, nearly double that in their more recent annual accounts, 4.1 billion. When we do look at it though, on a graphical basis, we do see some inconsistencies. Granted, it is increasing over the longer term and that COVID year. Some years though, year on year, we do see decreases followed by some very nice increases. Something we will factor in when we do look at our margin of safety. In terms of the health of the company, always compare total cash short-term investments versus total debt. 1.8 billion in 2014, 
They're 3.1 billion in their latest quarterly accounts. And we can see over the longer term, whilst their cash has been inconsistent, it is increased from 2014 to 2023. And as always, this number in singularity doesn't mean anything. That is why we do compare it to the total debt numerically and directionally. As we can see, 2.1 billion in 2014, it has increased dramatically 25 billion in that latest quarterly report. So their total debt has increased very sharply. One of the reasons why we will discuss that dividend safety score, which has been downgraded as well. That isn't a sign you typically want to see on this channel, but we will run through the reasons and the underlining metric. Now, what we like to do here is compare their earnings per share against how they've performed against analyst targets, as well as management estimates. Over the last four quarters, they have beaten two out of four, so a 50% track record. Reason why we look at this is so it can give us faith and confidence that they will hit their targets moving forwards. But as we can see, they have missed their last two quarterly targets, so a 50% track record. Moving forwards then, the anticipation for quarter three is a negative 6% earnings per share year on year, pretty much flat into quarter four, and then the next two do look fairly strong. Now, whether or not that gives you confidence that they will hit their earnings per share estimate for 2025, that will lower down the forward PE to around 19.32. So then we move on to essentially looking at some underlying metrics with their gradings. First one, the valuation. They do get a D. Now, one of the reasons we see this, the P on a non-gap basis, forward-looking, 22.26. Sector median trading much lower, 15.8. So, in fact, for Starbucks, in comparison to the sector, you are paying a 41% premium. Now, when we do take a look at other metrics, they all signify the exact same thing, that in comparison to the sector median, Starbucks is trading at a premium. Now, some instances when we review companies on the channel, it is warranted. For example, if their growth metrics are very strong, their profitabilities are very strong, and that is something we will try and uncover today when we look at their growth grade so they get a c plus revenue year on year so the last full year 7.45 percent sector median low single digit the same to be said forward looking 7.4 percent sector median 3.6 one of the things i do quite like to look at is this earnings per share over the next five years anticipated increase year on year 11.8 not too dissimilar from the sector median at 11.24 so it is starting to make sense on a growth basis around a c plus not really great ideally we want to see a b score at a bare minimum in terms of profitability well an a plus interesting because their gross profit margin of 28 percent is lower than the sector of 37 but when we look at their bottom line strong double digit 11.4 net income for the sector coming in at mid single digit the other thing that we do like is that cash from operations 6.54 billion with sector median 283 so as a quick wrap up for this part of the analysis a buy rating from wall street a double hold from the other two analysts a d on the valuation a c plus on the growth with an a plus sitting there for profitability now how has their performance compared against other massive names like chipotle like compass group and others that we've reviewed on the channel so what we're looking at is their total return so this includes dividends reinvested and identifying any potential trends for the industry or even starbucks as a whole so it is down negative 19 percent over the last 12 months including if you are reinvesting those dividends when we expand it over the last five years they are pretty much up low single digit at four percent pretty poor but what this does tell us that pretty much the majority in this industry other than cmg which is up very very strong have been having a very poor last five years when we expand this over the last 10 years 147 percent over the last 10 years they are the third best performing we can see cmg forming very strongly the top there leading in this industry we then want to just ask a question now we are starting to do this on more of our episode analysis where we're looking to see whether or not we should be investing in these companies based on the question does it outperform the S&P 500 because in reality if the answer is no and you don't see it doing it over the next 10 years you could question whether or not this is the right stock for you S&P then over the last 12 months up 25% Starbucks down 19% over the last five years S&P up 85% Starbucks up 4% and when we expand to the last 10 years the S&P has outperformed but again you can see in fact here there was quite some time before Starbucks's drop where it was significantly outperforming the S&P 
Question then is to ask, do you believe it will outperform moving forwards? And again, if not, there are a lot of low-cost ETFs like Vo that do track the S&P that might be better and more worth your while. Also, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want access to this or any other articles, all completely free, do click on that pinned comment below. We have an article here, how to find undervalued stocks, where you run through the screeners that we use on this channel to find very good quality companies trading at a discount. Or if you want to see our latest 12 undervalued high quality companies, again, this article will reveal all and go into some detail. Now, before we talk about the dividend safety score and look at the valuation, we do want to just run through their latest investor presentation summary, how they performed and what their expectation is moving forwards. First thing to note here then, in terms of their revenues, we can see 8.6 billion. It is down around 1% year on year. And when we look at where that growth is coming from, in fact, no growth as we can see, negative 4% when we're looking at it globally, negative 3% when we're looking at it in terms of North America, and negative 6% internationally. In fact, China down double digits. In terms of other metrics, well, as you know on this channel, we want not just increasing revenues, which we didn't see in this latest quarter, but we want increasing margins as well, which unfortunately we can see it is down to 12.8% where it was previously sitting around 14.2. Earnings per share also down. Now their global store count is up nearly 39,000, 6% year on year. But what is the point in having more stores if the footfall, the traffic isn't increasing and therefore that top line revenue is decreasing? Something just to think about there. And when we move forwards into the full year of 2024, very important in terms of their comparative growth for global, they're expecting low single digit decline to flat, the same for US Pacific. In fact, for China, they're just expecting single digit decline, no growth there. In terms of their operating margin as a whole for the full year, no movement. They're expecting around 3 billion in capital expenditures. And in terms of their full year gap earnings per share, as well as non-gap flat to low single digits. However, again, as we mentioned, they are continuing to increase those stores. 12% in China, 4% in the US, 6% globally. Again, a question you need to ask yourself moving forwards, do you believe that they will be able to increase that footfall in their stores? Dividend safety then, 60, borderline safe. Let's touch upon that. 90 billion market cap company, so a large company. And we can, in fact, see they have been downgraded. So before it was safe, now they are looking at borderline safe. What that means, essentially a moderate risk of a dividend cut over a full economic cycle. Now, in the last recession, they didn't pay a dividend, so no comparative data. We see negative 6% sales. Bear in mind, S&P was sitting around negative 12, so it is above the average. In terms of the recession return, well, negative 69%. It did trail the S&P, which was around negative 55%. In terms of dividend growth, well, we like to see this nice high single digit increase, 7.5% last September, 10% on average over the last five years, strong double digit over the last 10 at 17%. And they have been increasing those dividends for the last 13 years consecutively. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, as always, it states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. So we have our first sign of undervaluation, 2.86 versus 2.07. Another severe undervaluation signal, 21.2 below the five year of 29. When we do, however, look at the consumer discretionary, it does sit much lower as a sector at 14.3. Just remember, we don't look at any of these models in singularity. We will conclude towards the end. Now, our focus in today is on free cash flow. For new viewers, earnings data is susceptible to manipulation, so we draw your attention to the free cash flow below 50% to be industry specific. Now, 2022, very high at 90%. 2023, 67%. Expected next year around 71%. So it is a little bit too high than what we like to see at our own blanket rule of 60%. Also higher than the preference for restaurants. Something just to bear in mind, one of the reasons we could see that lowering essential dividend score. In terms of free cash flow, well, growth consistently over longer term. Not something you see with Starbucks. Then again, it isn't a very rapidly growing tech company, but you would like to see some consistency, which we don't clearly see here. Over the next 12 months as well, very minimal movement expected to the 2023 figure. In terms of sales growth, well, very strong. In fact, as we mentioned earlier, 3 to 7%, double digit over the last three years, 7% on a trailing 12 month. But as we saw, very minimal growth. In fact, low single digit to negative growth anticipated for the full year of 2024. Numerically speaking, then, this is just what we saw in a different form more than doubled over the longer term. What is also nice with Starbucks, they have returned excess cash, a lot of share buybacks over the longer term, although in the more recent years, very minimal. Hopefully it is something they do start to accelerate. 
In terms of ROIC, well, as always, 10% or more give us faith management are able to effectively allocate their capital. We are seeing here consistently above that, so very strong. 33% in 2023, very attractive for investors who want to add more or for those investors who are considering this as a purchase. We then move on to the margins. Well, 16% is what we do want to see as a minimum for the restaurant industry, straddling around there consistently year on year. Free cash flow margin above 5% is what we want to see, pretty much what we have seen as well over the longer term. 10% in the more recent year. Now, finally, the net debt to EBITs are earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization, below 3.5 for restaurants. Numbers below, just as a reminder, it is the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of that debt and net of cash on hand. 2.06 in 2023, looking fairly decent, well below the 3.5, 2.11 forecasted over the next 12 months. So no real worries with that dividend safety, in my own personal opinion, especially with that free cash flow payout around the 70% level. Just something, though, to keep an eye on moving forward as well as the next quarter. Let's jump into the valuation model. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. First model, multiple valuation model. Companies in a similar sector and size. Their PE multiple with the average PE. Multiply that by the EPS of Starbucks to give an intrinsic value showing some nice undervaluation. But as always, do bear in mind we're not looking at any of these models in isolation. We then have the dividend discount model where we have the yearly dividends over the period. Average growth just under 10%, more recent at 7.55 September 23. Forward looking a lot more conservative. We've gone for 5.5%. Again, another undervaluation signal. We then move on to the DCF model where we have the free cash flow year on year. Average growth looking very high. Forward looking, we've gone 11% around the 10 to 12% that management are forecasting with analysts. With the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by those shares outstanding, and we have our third and final intrinsically undervalued sign. So in terms of the valuation and the intrinsic value today, the average of these three coming to $101. Do bear in mind, as always, you can click the pinned comment below. Grab a copy of this model to get to both intrinsic and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list. So as always, we start off with a 10% margin of safety. We only execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria. Essentially a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. If you believe that for Starbucks, will it buy at $91? Then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. Today's episode it isn't quite at a 25% margin of safety just yet, but we do see it at around 20 to 25%. Up to $81 would give you that 20% MOS level. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast, well, over the next 12 months, they do see the share price at $95. They see upside implied of 20% over the year. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, they do see this as a buy. Now, in my opinion, this does look good. It is near that 3% yield as well with a 20% margin of safety. So for me, this is definitely one to consider for the portfolio, adding on to this, which I already do hold. As always, though, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Is Starbucks one you're looking to buy? Maybe on the watch list waiting for it to drop further, or for whatever reason, maybe it's just not one that does fit your strategy. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button, and as always, we'll see you all on the next one.